Hello and welcome to another episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. And today we're talking about Forspoken, the game Pirate played for about eight hours to completion on his stream yesterday, and I watched, you know, like 95% of the whole thing. Would you agree with this? Probably the worst AAA game of the last 10 years, Pyro. It's the fifth best PS5 game ever made out of the five games he they've made. He just stole that from 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> he steals all his jokes from 4chan. Yeah, I, I streamed it for like eight hours and it actually felt like I was doing one of those subathons that last a week. It was just so draining. I mean, I was rushing to the end to be fair, but yeah, it's just there's nothing redeemable about that game. No, it was so bad I fell asleep for about... I can't even say how long I fell asleep for. The two things that killed it for me was the frame rate is the exact same as the Callisto Protocol when it came out on PC. Like, they get this whole team to like play test the PS5 version version but then when it comes onto pc they just put some one guy and it's like does it run not crash on boot yeah, up right? tried yeah. on one pc right forget about every other fucking build yeah, of exactly. pc and the frame rate was dog shit like uh, if you were lucky it'd be like 20 fps the more that was going on the more like there'd be lag apparently it's something to do with like they don't compile their shaders or something like just yeah textbook shit that you need to fix like when porting a game so when you play a PC game, your mouse gets bound to the middle of the screen. So like, you know, when you look around, you wave the mouse around and shit, you don't accidentally tab out. They didn't implement that. So if I move my mouse too much and then click to like attack or do something, it would tab me out the game. So I was fighting this one <laughs> bird boss and you have to keep looking up and around to see where it was. I think it tabbed me out the game like nine times in a 10 minute boss fight. I mean, you spent the first hour of the stream trying to set it up. Oh yeah, just to, just to see if like there was an error on my end with why the game was running like absolute shit. But yeah, no, there wasn't. I, I literally had a, a PC guy like DMing me on Discord the whole time, like telling me like, okay, turn this off, turn this off. And it's like, okay, it still runs that shit. Okay, it's not your fault anymore. It's the game's fault. Yeah, uh, you, I think you were getting on average like 40 frames per second and that was it. There was one moment where you went into like a cave and you did get 60 frames per second for that it one. because there was no light. <laughs> the, yeah, there was no light. There was no sun or anything. It was, just, it was literally just like a, a dim Minecraft like cobblestone cave. I heard the voice acting was okay, but the lines were so bad that... I don't think the voice acting was good. It's because okay. they didn't record in the same studio at the same time. There's an awkward silence after someone speaks for about three seconds. So they clearly like recorded their lines separately in different places. It sounds like they were recording it in a cupboard. There's no character development whatsoever. None of the characters are interesting. You don't get invested in them. You just don't care. Especially the main character and her funny little speaking bracelet. She, she does have developments, but it's just so forced. So here's one thing I noticed. So like the, the cuff you get, which is literally just Jarvis from Iron Man just spouting out one-liners. By the way, they, they did the same thing that they did in the Rick and Morty game High on Life where you can turn down the interactive dialogue because it's just so fucking like heavy uh, right? did you do that no no someone gave me fifty dollars to turn it onto max and I, <laughs> I put, i'm not joking man every 30 seconds it's like you know she kills a boss well that just happened just and they just repeat the same thing they're not even good lines and they just still repeat them anyway yeah th there was so many like for the amount of dialogue in the game like during combat it was insane how little like new dialogue there was they're recycling it but th the biggest thing is that annoyed me is the cuff that you have turns out to be the bad guy and then you got to fight him at the end. No, you're spoiling it for the one person who was going to play it that's listening. <laughs> no, he's, he's got a point. Spoiler warnings here for, for anyone that wants to play for Spoken when it goes on sale next week because no one's buying it. 90% <laughs> off. Yeah, that, that's another thing. The game is 65 quid just for the base <laughs> game on Steam. 65 quid, so that's what, like $80? I bought the $100. You, sh you should genuinely be shot in the streets. I bought the $100 version that just has an RGB cape and a necklace. The Razor Kraken cape, which changes color. You know you can customize your fingernails. Did you know that? Yep. Yeah, you can put on different fingernails that give you... You can paint different fingernails that give you different abilities. <laughs> it was, I was just laughing. Literally, one of the collectibles you find is nail polish. Yeah. So you can change the colors of your fucking fingernails and you get like one bonus to attack power. I was reading a theory that it was a, a, another case of like the ESG sort of thing with a company. Because apparently when they released like a really early tech demo, like the main character was completely different and stuff. And didn't you say, Niall, that like the final boss you get saved by like five other women as well? Like it's like a big like girl power thing when Frey's fighting the final boss like in the first phase she calls him a gaslighter as well like she says you're gaslighting me it's i i just actually had to say like okay 
He wants to kill everyone and corrupt the entire world. That's fine. But he's a gaslighter. He's got to die now, guys. This is too much for me. I like how they steal from so many other games as well. Have you ever played that game Prototype, Niall? Did you play that back in the day on PS3, I believe? They yoink so much of that. You know the spikes coming from the ground? They literally yoink that as a move from Prototype, like one to one. And just the running and shit, like the parkour, like that is Prototype. But I think Prototype actually did it better. Climbing up walls and stuff, I had to fight with this fucking game. I was just spamming the jump button and stuff and wasn't like it wasn't detecting that I was climbing. Oh, it was so bad. And then you can like, I don't know why they did this, but like the cuff powers your sprint, right? Because he's the one that gives you superpowers. So if you sprint too long, the stamina runs out and you need to wait like, you know, 20 seconds for it to recharge. It's almost like they did that just to stop people from sprinting to the end, which is, you know, exactly what I did. I was just running past enemies. Like I remember at one point there was like a group of 40 zombies or something and I was fighting them and I was spamming mouse one and it'd take each one like, you know, a minute to kill. I just said to stream, I was like, nah, I can't be asked. I'm sorry. I just ran away. There are like five enemy types, right? So there's this giant bear, this giant stag, but they all have one attack and it's the same attack across the board where they just kind of jump at you. I pointed this out to Jay as well. So, you know, in like Dark Souls and Elden Ring, you get like these kind of animal bosses, right? So in games like that, when you get behind them to get some like sneaky hits in that they, you know, the devs thought of that. So what they'll do is have the animal do some kind of like quick turn, bite at you or kick you with its back legs. I swear they only had like three bosses and then it's like, okay, you beat this boss. What's the next boss? It's the same boss, but now there's two of them. It's just, ah, it's so lame. No, no one's bought it, but there's not a lot of reviews on there. There's only a couple hundred and apparently for day one, that's like really bad. Like it's basically dead on arrival. I bought the full game and played about 3.5 hours so far. The game seems to have taken inspiration from games like Infamous. I like how it says inspiration. Like this is not inspiration. It's just like straight up theft. Yeah, it's like, what? that's not a, how is that positive? It's like they, they copied another game. I, I swear that review said something about how it's like 30 FPS and that's enough for me. It's like, fuck off. I'm honestly, it, I've never seen a game that is more like, self-absorbed with its own story it's insane there are so many cuts it was only eight hours right did you skip any cutscenes? oh yeah no i, I had to oh, okay the dev said that this game would take 10 to 20 hours no 20 to 30 hours to beat without doing side content right and i i actually believe that just because of the fucking cutscenes. i believe that and the walking because you can't skip the walking you've got to open there was one part where you go into a library Go through the library and you've got to read every single book. And then there's another part where you've got to talk to every single NPC. <laughs> that sounds right. like a parody. Yeah, no, but this is real. <laughs> I, I was literally thinking while I was watching Pirate Stream, I was thinking like, did they actively try to make this game shit? You have to find every word in the dictionary, guys. It's a side quest. Have fun. The whole point of the quest is you've got to open up books and read them. And then there's another part where you have to speak to the NPCs and get their like two lines of dialogue. They made it mandatory. So they had a party and you had to speak to like nine or 10 NPCs just to progress the story. And each one was like, I love drinking ale I do. It's really good. There's this one part where you befriend this little child, you befriend this little child, and then she dies. Oh my God. She dies like five minutes later. And then for the rest of the game, you're like crying about it. And they put like a little memorial for her, like put little flowers and shit around her. Everyone's weeping over this child's grave. Five meters away, there's a rotting corpse on the ground, <laughs> which has just been left there. Yeah, yeah. There's an attack early on in the game, in the town. A bunch of people die, but there's this one child that goes up to Frey, and you can tell that she's like mo-capped and actually looks better designed than all the other children, so you can tell that she's like, you know, gonna have some kind of plot relevance. Tries to steal her phone, gives it back, all the all this kind of stuff. Jesus and then Christ. All she does in-game is teach Frey how to cry which is like a two minute tutorial and then after that straight after she dies and then this is like Frey's motivation for the entire game to like kind of avenge this child and how all these people are child murderers but it's like you know other other people <laughs> died during the attack not just her they set up this little memorial with flowers and candles to like kind of you know signify like ah oh, rip this child but yeah like Oliver said there are just people that are still <laughs> rotting in the street dead right next to the memorial it's like oh you you weren't in a cutscene who cares but this game has no concept of smell did you notice now the protagonist, what, I can't even remember her name, generic New York black woman. Yeah. She doesn't shower for the entire game. I mean, when do, when do girls shower in games? And she's dirty as well. Like, you see the fucking mud on her face. You can see all the blood on her face. She starts the game in a courtroom. So, okay, she's under stress. She's probably sweating there. She, like, leaves the courtroom. She goes. She sleeps in her fucking I mean, clothes that she wore to court. And, like, straight away, she's in the magical world. Not a single shower once. She doesn't even put water in her face. In fact, she doesn't even drink water at any point in the game. How many games include 
bathing other than like sims but it's like she's covered in blood and she's dirty and she does go to bed yeah she frequently goes to bed within the game and she just sleeps in her normal clothes she's fucking filthy this bitch fucking filthy of all the criticisms i want to watch colossal playing god of war like is he walking the boy down to the river and like rinsing him off <laughs> we just had we just had a very sweaty adventure boy down to the river. Like, do you remember in the early hours, that mandatory stealth segment that was so shit, you could just tell it's never going to appear again. And then it's like, you know, all the guards want to throw her in jail, right? And then it's like, she escapes by running down some stairs, doesn't even leave, puts on a cloak. Oh, no one recognizes me now. I have, a, I have a cloak. Before you shit on the child dying, like, maybe check it's not dedicated to someone's real-life child that died, you know, just... <laughs> oh my god! Imagine that. Imagine that's why, like, it was actually like a... I am so worried that that's actually the case now. I, I pray, man. Imagine asking for, like, the rights to use your dead child in one of the shittest video games ever made. <laughs> Oliver's picking on, like, do you not remember, like, for example, in the beginning of the game, it's like, you know, when the, the thugs set her apartment on fire, and it's like, she wakes up next to the money, the apartment's on fire, she's like, shit, I gotta find my cat, and you can literally interact with the bag of money, this is a duffel bag, by the way, like, not a big one, you can literally hold it with one hand, and then you try to interact with the bag to pick it up, the bag that you fucking woke up next to, and she goes, I gotta find Homer first, the cat's called Homer, because of, like, you know, beloved children's character, Homer Simpson, Homie. yeah, but it's just like, if, if she picked up the bag, she could have picked up the cat, which was in the living room, and then left, like, one way they could have changed that is just have the bag of money already on fire or something. If she had the 100k, if she picked up the bag, we wouldn't have had to play the shit game. It wouldn't have even happened. That's why I'm so annoyed about it. So, Pyro, you're a video game reviewer. Have you ever tried to get early copies of games, or do you feel like that would compromise your opinion? Oh, no, I'd love to, but I, I never really know where to ask, right? But yeah, no, I see so many people that kind of... But yeah, no, I, I see what you mean in a sense, because, like, if you get a review review copy it does kind of turn into like a rat race a little bit that's what my most reviewers are always quite careful with you know they never give anything lower than like a six like because they still want to keep getting games from that publisher yeah it's insane because a six to me says this game is above average now nah, it's it, okay so look at metacritic for example right it's like anything below 80 the icon for the color changes from green to yellow it's like mid every game is just going to be a seven eight or nine and then with the one exception of ten Oh, yeah, I mean, that that is just how, yeah, that's how every game is rated. Well, that's shit, then. That's a terrible reviewing system. I mean, it's just crap. One guy that was reviewing for Spoken, was it, what was the one, Jay, that was a shill? Game Informer? And it was 95. like, they gave it a 95. Like, what does that even mean? So that means you found everything perfect apart from, like, one little thing. Like, like what is that? Didn't you point out, Jay, that, like, that company positively reviewed games way more than others or something on some graph or something yeah some company it was like 66 percent like they just they rate games 66 percent higher than other critics so you just know their opinions like worthless i mean it should not be it should not be legal because that game was 65 quid so imagine how many people just get ripped off buying that because of this paid show review. For me, it's a fucking investment, right? Because I get to live stream it, I get money from that, I get subs, I get donos, and then I turn it into a VOD, then I turn it into a second... Like, I'm, it's literally a money printer for me. But imagine for someone that just wanted to actually buy it just to enjoy themselves and they got scammed with that dog shit. I mean, imagine if this is the review you see. This is from Gaming Nexus. Forspoken is absolutely fantastic. With all the spells you can unlock, the gear you can upgrade, the fights, the bosses, and a storyline that rivals the best video game stories. This You're isn't a this return up. to where, form where for this? Square Enix. Where, where it's a testament this? that they still got it and will have it for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who wrote that? Colossal? Gaming Nexus. 95 out of 100 from Gaming Nexus. I like how Colossal's review would actually include the sentence, a dirty black woman. I might do a review for it for the second channel, actually. I might genuinely do it. Get something out of this eight hour slog that I had to watch on Pyro Stream. I, I don't even think you, you could do it. I really, because it's just so boring. I mean, you're doing it, aren't you? You're doing it. Oh no, I, I streamed it and I'm going to do a second channel, but I don't think I'm going to do a main channel on it because it's just, it's too boring. Does Metacritic, uh, do they condense YouTube reviews and include them? No, I think that they mix it between actual critics and then they allow the masses in with the user reviews. This is usually always the case, right? The user reviews will always be worse than the critic reviews most of the time, I think. 
Because you'll see, like, okay, so for Spoken right now, it'll be on, like, a 60 or something, I think, for, like, critic reviews. But then for user reviews, it'll probably be, like, an actual 2 or something. The ones where it defies, uh, like, where the user reviews are more positive than the critical reviews are usually on something that has, like, an offensive element in it, right? Yeah. Same goes for movies as well. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, there you go. For Spoken is 68. And then it says, uh... Please spend some time playing the game. Come back to review it starting at 12 p.m. PST on January the, the 25th. They're literally saying, please, guys, just give it a chance, please. I don't think there's a single redeeming quality, is there? Oh, the, the writing was phenomenal, like the one-liners, come on. The bit with the dragon and she goes, he's right behind me, isn't he? And there was a laughter track. Yeah, you say that, but I could <laughs> that believe didn't, that. That didn't happen, but you thought. That didn't happen, but you thought. Was there anything that... Because you played high in life. A few things made you laugh. Did anything make you laugh or even nose exhale in the game? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I laughed. I was crying my eyes out near the end, but it was totally like me doing a bit. So... I was just that sleep deprived and jaded from playing the game. Uh, there were these birds that were attacking me near the end of the game, right? These golden birds. And they were weak to water. And the water magic you use, it just looks like you're throwing fucking water balloons. So <laughs> I just said to chat, I, I said to chat, like, this is really what we're doing after eight hours of gameplay, throwing water balloons at pigeons. And then I just okay, fucking so broke you, down you made crying. yourself laugh. It wasn't even the game. <laughs> it wasn't even the game yes. itself. Are there social issues in Forspoken? Like she does go on about like having nothing to begin with, but yeah, no, she's basically like an orphan. She lived in New York. She's she doesn't even have an apartment. She's she's completely fatherless. She's squatting in like uh, an abandoned apartment. She basically has nothing. No father. She's got in with the wrong crowd because she's basically- No father. Thanks, Oliver. <laughs> no I think we understood that she has no father. <laughs> that's that's part of the plot, by the way. Like the mom is the queen of like- It is, that's the whole point. Yeah, the mom is like the queen of the fantasy world. And then- But well, she's a dragon. Yeah. And then the dad- <laughs> the, the dad It's so is from... stupid! Well, that's a yeah. classic um, young adult fiction device not knowing who your parents are and then you find out that they're like very powerful at something or they're very important. Well, you never find out who the father is. Oh, yeah, well, so the father's like some black dude that just impregnated the witch at some point. Cause she's a witch. <laughs> I got so jaded, like, near the end. Do you remember all those cutscenes, just one after the other? And do you remember that, you know that guy and half his face was crystals, like, the, the dad character that died? Do you remember him, Oliver? Who? The, the guy who you saw, like, near the beginning of the game, and he was, like, the, the guy with the beard. Oh, the yeah, old yeah, guy. yeah. And he had, like, crystals on his face. Yeah, I thought they were going to do a twist that, like, she was the dad, because she, uh, he took care of Frey when she was a kid so i thought the twist was that he was going to be the father right and then I, and then i kind of just stepped back for a minute because i was that tired and i was like wait that can't be right because he's white he's and white. the mother's white <laughs> like that, yeah that was the big deduction like my brain was like hang on a minute i mean anything's fucking possible right were you meant to be able to beat the game in eight hours to be honest like Nile could have done it in six he spent the first hour setting it up yeah it was very slow i actually took my time in the opening hours but then i realized it's all the same schlop so i just kind of uh they, they they said though which was a cap the dev said to beat the game like, no side content is 10 to 20 hours, and then to do all the side content is 100 hours. That is fucking cap. Well, you they, could... they probably did some bullshit, like, find a thousand butterflies, right? So, like... Well, it was cats, but yes. Like, th this is a brave statement, Jay, but I'm not joking when I say the cutscenes were up there in, like, Death Stranding length. There were just so many. You can consider a cutscene just, like, following someone, because you do that for a great period of the game. Just following someone to get to the next checkpoint. Speaking to the NPC to get to the next checkpoint. Petting the cat to get to the next checkpoint. Reading the books in the library to get to the next checkpoint. And then you spend the rest of it running around a dirty, barren landscape. <laughs> <laughs> this emphasis on the dirtiness. I'm looking at the uh, this. I'm looking at gameplay and screenshots of the game, and I don't see the mud splattered face like you were describing. It just looks like a black woman. Oh uh, well, she was black, so most of the blackness hid the mud, probably. <laughs> I just, I just knew as soon as Nerd entertained it, it would end with racism. I just knew it. That's why I just didn't say anything. Let me read what Brianna Wu said. So this is some, I don't know. Whore. She's not even Asian, but she's called Wu. <laughs> Gonna be straight with y'all no, about Forspoken. 
Yeah. You could find wildly cringe dialogue in almost any AAA game. Coke. This is not even in the top 100 worst things I've heard. The increased scrutiny of this game is obviously because it's a black woman protagonist. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's just a cop-out. It's like, why am I not allowed to just say the game is objectively bad because it is a bad game? Like, nothing in that game worked. The combat was boring, the cutscenes went on too long, the story was shit, and it was contrived, and we've seen it a million times. The one-liners were shit, but, like, now you're not allowed to criticize it. Hello. I wonder if, like, they had completed the game, but the protagonist was different, so they had, they had not 100% decided on the main character, but, like, everything else, the gameplay and everything is already sorted. And then they realized, oh, shit. Our game sucks. <laughs> How can we avoid criticism here? Okay, let's make the main character a black woman. So people cannot criticize the game. I don't think so at all. <laughs> I definitely disagree. But I, I like how I like how they're basically 99% done with the game and only then they have the realization, wait, this fucking sucks. I mean, it works. It does fucking work. Because now you've got all the Twitter spurgs with the multicolored hair just like in love with it. Oh, it's such a vocal minority though, to be Is fair. Is it though? Is it though? Type in the search engine onto Twitter and type Forspoken or whatever the game's called. I can't remember now. Forspoken. <laughs> yeah. Type that into Twitter, see what comes up. It's all positive. Yeah, there's just so many fucking paid shills in the game. Speaking of paid shills, Oliver. Oh yeah. Oliver. Oliver. Uh, our sponsor today, or one of them, is Vessi <laughs> Sneakers. You know your audience the best. Talk to them about Vessi like you're telling your friends about a new product you found. Be authentic when introducing and talking about your experience with Vessi. You, you, you've, got to, you've got to carry it on. I can't do this. What is all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go so, so these shoes are a game changer Vessi makes shoes that and then you fill in the blank you don't just carry on to the next one <laughs> these shoes are a game changer Vessi makes shoes that are very comfortable I need to show <laughs> no. you this insane Come new on. shoe I've been wearing <laughs> they're called Vessi's and they're <laughs> listen uh up I've they been wearing these Vessi shoes waterproof. for the last brackets insert time. And let me tell you yes. why I'm it's a huge fan. I just learned about this life <laughs> hack, you know? <laughs> when your shoes get wet and you have soggy, cold, gross feet all day. Well, these <laughs> Vessi shoes will literally prevent that from ever happening again. <laughs> I just tried these Vessi shoes and let me confirm that this sneaker will change your life. I finally tried these shoes everyone has been talking about. They're called Vessies, and they are the best shoes in the world. I just if found the ultimate shoes for the winter. They're from this company called Vessi, and they're I could, uh, yeah, absolutely I think amazing. The would first wear time shoes I put on Vessi shoes, if they wouldn't be I destroyed. thought they were actually magic. They are the magical of shoes of the world. Oh, God, these might be the best shoes I have ever worn. They're from a company called Vessi, and you can't live without them. <laughs> Why is Vessi Stormburst the best shoe to have in the winter? All the features of a you rubber know, winter boot built into a sneaker. 100% waterproof, these are the talking not water-resistant, waterproof oh. and warm, what, yet what lighter that, then? and more comfortable than boots. They, were, you were they have only a rugged use rubber outsole that gives you extra like grip in wet conditions. Conditions, added lining inside for extra warmth <laughs> in the cold. They slip on and off. It's quick and easy <laughs> to get outside. How uh, does it work? Well, it's made all from DYMA dash TEX brackets Dymatex, no, a super soft knit material that keeps your feet warm this. in the cold but cool <laughs> in the warmer months. He reads the, Doesn't uh, feel like it should be waterproof. Yeah. But it is. We should be paid it's triple comfortable. Going three points. It's durable. But it is. And it's breathable. How comfortable is it? Tell them. <laughs> it proceeds not to tell them. How comfortable is it? Tell them. That can't be the way you were supposed to do that. It's not. It's not. Vessies are my go-to shoes by my door. Check them out in the link. Vessie.com <laughs> slash TBH for a pair of your Vessie shoes. Do you remember one of the early episodes of TBH? Um, 
I had a picture of colossal shoes on screen. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Oh, they had the, they had holes in them, don't they? I do wear my shoes into the ground, but yeah. I have been wearing vessies for the last three years, and they have still held up. That long? Three years. You had them before you we were sponsored? Sorry, did I say three years? I meant like three days. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They've lasted those three days. They're still going. You're just making them sound so bad. Excellent shoes. They're really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Use code TBH for 15% off. So oh. the, uh, the topics for this episode, guys, like Dolan and Pyro wanted to talk about video game related things. And I don't play video games and I didn't want to watch a show based on a video game. And what I tried to shoehorn in at the last minute, something I hadn't, haven't really looked into a whole lot, but I've been meaning to. Dolan obliged me on this. So I think we're, we're half up to speed on this. So maybe Dolan and I can explain it, what little we know about it to, uh, to Pyro and Colossal and see what they think. Um, but the, the other topic is uh, five minute or 15 minute cities. <laughs> I think this is, uh, from what I gather, this is something that caught some traction on TikTok. Someone was drawing attention to a trial 15-minute city in Oxford, making the case that this was leading to like a dystopian future. I don't know anything about Oxford. Is that a city that's uh, known for like congestion? Like the traffic is really bad there? Not really. So Oxford is one of the cities trying this out. The current mayor of Paris also, I think one of the things she ran on was increasing like hyper proximity within Paris. The idea that everything you would need would be within like a, a 15 minute walk or a five minute drive, something like that. So you don't end up, you know, getting caught in traffic, just trying to take care of your daily necessities or whatever. It's a global movement. It's something that's being pushed by the WEF. And I think there were some talks about it um, in Davos this past uh, gathering. The, it's something that they're pushing as a way of alleviating emissions and, uh, if, you, if we can keep people from having to drive to get what they need, they can use bikes or they can use greener you know, modes of transportation. They can ride together on public transport, which is, you know, burns less gas than everybody in their own car. Oh, everything that I need is within walking distance and that's a plus. But there are also some cities that w where they have very bad public transport. California is notoriously has terrible public transport. If you were trying to increase the hyper proximity within your city, you're, you're a city planner or you're a mayor or you're whatever. How do you make it happen? Basically, if it's not already laid out that way, how do you make it happen? So there would be the carrot and the stick for it, where you would be subsidizing businesses to move within the area, or you penalize people for traveling outside of the area, or you discourage, you discourage it through fines. And what's happening in Oxford included fines. So it's a plate system where cameras are scanning your plates. And if you are traveling outside of your district between certain hours of the day, you get a ticket in the mail, it seems. Right. It's dog shit. What a dog shit idea. All you have to do to keep people in your city is make the city or the large town a nicer place to live. So people want to spend more time there. So I'm living in Mexico at the moment in a place called San Pedro, and I literally have not left San Pedro since I've been in Mexico, other than to do like a little trip. Tijuana. But uh, otherwise, I stay in the same city, the same principality. No reason to leave. Everything's here. Got all the rest. I don't cook, so I have to go out to the fucking restaurants. You eat at a restaurant every day? Yeah, I don't cook. What? Food is cheap enough, and it's high quality. So if you're not uh, if you're not building a city from scratch, there is this problem of how do you get people to conform to you know what you want them to do, and fines are, are one way. But imagine uh, think about like a suburbs and city setup where you have people who, in order to have the house that they want and the yard that they want, will live an hour, sometimes even more. I've heard of people who drive two hours to work, three hours to work, like insane amounts of time in their commute to in order to have the their house where they want it and to have the kids in the school district they want and then to also have the job that they need to work. Well, good news about that. More and more people are working from home now. So they're doing the home office thing. And like, that's a growing thing. That's a growing thing. And it's only going to continue to grow, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be less of that commute. So yeah, I think cutting down on the emissions, you know, whatever. I'm not Greta fucking thunder ass, oh. but I think it's a good <laughs> thing overall. The funny... Sorry. Go on, go on, you little weasel. <laughs> the funny thing of the their supposed 
you know, the reasons for doing it is cutting down the emissions. But one of the things, I think, I'm not sure if it was in Oxford, but basically they allowed you to travel or they will allow you to travel up to a hundred times mm -hmm. to another district in a year, which is, you know, not very much if you're commuting every day. So people, people complained and that their response was, oh, we'll just take, you know, the, the longer paths. But then that kind of brings up the question of if you're taking the longer road, you're just going to be creating yeah. more carbon emissions. Their idea is shit because you're never going to cut down on emissions anyway. Because obviously, like, okay, the UK, for example, I mean, this is the test subject here. We have literally no manufacturing, basically, except for, like, I think cutlery in Sheffield, and that's about it. And, like, tourism trinkets Steel. and shit. <laughs> cutlery, yeah, that's... Would you, no, no, what do you mean cutlery? Just, like, the, the paper forks at McDonald's, like... Well, you're skipping ahead in the WEF plan because they're, um, you know, get past 2030, and then we're starting to look at... We're looking at, like, uh, a future that requires green transportation for international trade and international travel commercially they have this plan for things that don't exist yet nuclear powered planes or uh solar gliders that'll that'll take you from uh london to new york how do they get to that it, it would be like uh making it illegal or through subsidies or whatever and so that's kind of the same thing that we're looking at with this city planning is you're trying to overlay how do you how do you make it happen even though it's not happening naturally through market forces you do it through incentives and you do it through fines so make it so expensive to to live outside of the city that people without even realizing why it's happening just go oh, i can't afford to do that and they don't do it so we were in this city in america we were in this restaurant there was this black dude that came into the restaurant we were just trying to eat like a little fucking i don't know what we were eating lobster probably no it wasn't <laughs> yeah. it was something it, it was like Global seafood eats. i think I think it was seafood. So then this black dude comes in, like this old crusty black dude. He goes in, uses the bathroom. Oh yeah. I had just been into the bathroom and I'd noticed the soap on the like soap tray. And it had dirty hairs. This was hairs. very strange. This is absolutely 100% true. And there was like hairs on the soap. So I recognized the soap. When this dude brought it back, came to our table, and tried to sell us this bar of soap that he'd just stolen from the bathroom. This did happen. <laughs> he'd fuck, he did, this what? happened. He tried to sell us like a used bathroom soap that he'd just stolen. <laughs> what? We were in a we were in a pretty we were in a reasonably nice restaurant and I think we actually were eating lobster. I had a lobster roll and a guy came out of the bathroom and he he was like uh he was like, fuck, I should I do an interpretation? I'll do the voice. I'll do the voice. Ah, right, yo, son, you want to buy this soap? Oh, my Damn, God. This body but most fragrant soap y'all ever tried. Y'all praise Jesus. Don't believe <laughs> lies. It's going to be delectable. That stone who smell of soap. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much verbatim what he said. He unfolded a towel, and in his hand was a bar of soap that was covered in, like, little, little hair. Yeah. Do you want to buy this soap that I make? This is like boutique handmade soap. Uh, can I sell this to you? It didn't even wash it off. And he started getting aggressive and I thought he was going to pull out a gun because we're in America, so. Yeah, you're using a high sort of comical voice. He was not, it was not a comical scenario and he wasn't <laughs> friendly. Like it, it was sort of an aggressive guy. More like a, so he soap walk. We'll check this out. Your your guy sounds like a your guy sounds like a hundred and ten pound dude who cartwheeled into the room and is very entertaining. But this guy was a lot more threatening than that. He actually got angry at us that we didn't want to buy it. But so what is your point? Is your point that this uh, the fifteen minute cities might actually keep undesirables out of your district? If you think if you think about this fifteen minute. Uh, city in practice, what is this going to look like? You might argue that it's segregation. You're going to have uh, really nice districts and you're going to have less nice districts. And then you're not, you're discouraged from going from one neighborhood to the other. And that's a, that's not a new problem. <laughs> that's something that supposedly we're trying to fix, right? Redlined cities where uh, African Americans in the U S had difficulty getting mortgages. If the house they were trying to buy was over this line that they were, you know, redlining, it's a, it's like an unfortunate part of American history. And then there's also districts that are divided. There's school districts that have been segregated intentionally and um, 
unintentionally and some that were sort of you know secretly one of the many many unfortunate uh, parts massaged into being the way that they are with urban housing and everything all being localized within an area so picture a city that's built like a railroad track it is a line they've already started digging it like i've seen construction photos and it's meant to hold nine million people well i think they're building it that way so it's an easier place to bomb according to the city <laughs> planning for the line uh according to some of the promotional documents for it or what people can suss out about it it's going to require like authorization to enter and to leave so that'll be part of how they reduce uh emissions i guess is that they trap you in the city to keep you from leaving to go get something else that's hunger games what i hope that more people will become sensitive to is ideas like this that have a lot that have a lot of dystopian negative possibilities that are being fed to you through what seems like a like a noble idea something like we're we're trying to you know we're in line with greta thunberg we're trying to reduce emissions this is because of the climate crisis and so we're enacting this policy but what are they really sneaking in and what is that going to look like is it a hunger games type situation and it's oh we have to do this now don't worry it's a lot of things that get rushed through in the name of a crisis it turns out to be a plan that already had been written up by like a corporation 20 years ago as exactly what they want to happen that'll help them make more money or some think tank that was paid for by like the rockefellers or whatever that uh, really has some sort of like racist or classist aim and it's being disguised in the form of of doing a positive thing for the whole planet so i just i think people should be more questioning about policies like this you're seeing sort of like a meme against doing your own research now like don't let someone shame you for looking into things I see a lot of like, oh, here's the trusting the science people. And it's like, you know, this stock photo of all of this scientific stuff going on in a, in a beautiful clean lab. And then here's someone doing their own research. And it's just like a white lady on a toilet. All right. So we need to do the Manscaped sponsor now. And I'm actually not doing it this time. Uh, there were a few comments. There have been a few comments saying they're getting sick of me doing the sponsor. I have no idea why. It doesn't make any sense to me. So we took a vote in the Patreon Discord. Join the Patreon. $5 a month. To see who would do the sponsor this time. And Nerd City got the most votes. So he's going to be doing the sponsor. Nerd City. I do have uh, Manscaped, as I said the last time we talked about it. And I like it. But the uh colossal pointed out like oh you and nikki are sharing it and yeah we are and uh and there's something kind of unhygienic about Why don't you that just get two just get two you can use code tbh and get another one i think what uh <laughs> manscape is addressing here is that there is something unhygienic about like if you are using this to clip your beard and also to shave your mane are you washing it in between are you always doing that or is it like you never do that? And so you've got maybe even multiple members of a household who are using something to, to shave one part of their body and then also a less hygienic part. And uh, Manscaped has got a new product that's designed for beards and not for uh, shaving your mane. Or what did they call it in the Christmas one? It was like polishing your candy cane or something. It was ter terrible pun last time. I've actually like no meme. I bought the lawnmower. I think it's the 3.0 or the 4.0. Breaking news. Manscaped now sells beard products. I, well, we kind of covered that. I mean, we just did our own version. Yeah, but we got to do it verbatim. No, we don't. That's not how it works. Yeah, we do. No. We do. No, that's the rule. All right. So it, uh, for fixing that starts with the beard hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all in one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. That's right. Face grooming doesn't need to be hard. Get 20 different beard lengths in all one guard. I, I, like, I'm suspicious when I see the word hard there because everything was a sexual pun in the last one. So face grooming doesn't need to be hard. Are they suggesting uh, people get erections as they're grooming? Their I crotch? don't think about any of this stuff when I'm reading, by the way. I just fucking do it. <laughs> Plus, it's waterproof. It's just like a switch turns on and Colossal is going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he becomes possessed by the spirit of capitalism. I like that. <laughs> so the, uh, the beard... What are they calling this thing? The beard hedger. So the beard hedger's waterproof. It's also... What the fuck's the one that... Claw, uh, the, 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 the Pyro robot? That one's called the... The groomer. Lawnmower 4.0, the latest one. It, it's actually really good, yeah. I'm not getting any cuts or anything. 
I mean, the 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 3.0 actually got some pretty like negative reviews for nicks and stuff, but yeah, no, the, the 4.0 is actually really good. So the beard the beard hedger and the lawnmower are both waterproof. So if you want to be trimming your hair in the shower, now to me that seems ridiculous. You get hair caught all over your legs and everything, but um, and probably electrocute yourself. Well, you so. won't. No, so it's waterproof. Apparently, take, take apparently toaster, it's safe take to the do. Toaster out first, and then if you wanted to, you could be using these in the shower. If you wanted to shave oh, no, your what, beard that, uh, in are the we shower, about the lawnmower or the hedge trimmer? Both. Actually, both. Yeah, They're no, both I use the waterproof. lawnmower literally in the shower, yeah, because the water just acts as a lubricant, right? So Yeah, you shave all your body hair so you can look in the mirror later and then jack off to yourself, fucking Peter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I can't even come back with a one-liner. It's just so bitter. I can't believe there's no sexual puns in this. There's only, there's no puns at all. There's only The only pun I saw was... They uh, fired the last person that did the writing. Because it was just too cringe. Good. Our ad read last time had this full breakdown of how they probably hired an Indian off of Fiverr. So this time, this time the Indian from Fiverr was like, Hello, sir. Would you like, <laughs> would you like a new Manscaped product today? I'm actually in a fucking Good hell. Good afternoon, <laughs> sir. Stop, so Oliver. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code tbhatmanscaped.com. I, I got a feeling we got to trim that out. I don't know why. Get it? We got to trim it out. Like our like our crotches and beards, we're going to have to trim out some of the uh, undesirable extra in this ad read. So you can get 20% off and free shipping with code TBH at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code to be honest. Please, beard hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 please. lengths. Uh, Colossal, do, do your skexy, please. Please, <laughs> child. Can we talk about the last of us now? Mm. <laughs> That's the... The Last of Us, very good show. We watch. We watch. I like how good much show. they lifted from the actual game into the show, like line for line and stuff. And you've just got those, you know, the audience type that played The Last of Us games and they just have to over explain each sheet, each scene when they watch it with someone that hasn't actually played the game. It's like, oh, look, look, this is the bit with the clickers. Oh, uh, why does Joe have a machine gun? He doesn't get it until the end of the game. Why does he have a machine gun now? This is where his daughter dies. Yeah, it's not that good. I mean, it's okay. It's worth watching. I will watch it. You think everything is bad that was made after the year 2000? No. no, you do. Anything after the year 2000, you don't watch. Well, like those old HBO shows are much better than the ones they're making today. Actual fucking Can you argue with this? No, you can't. Old Leggood. Old Leggood. No, good. You're, you're literally saying old Leggood is your argument. New Leggood. <laughs> The Last of Us is like a 7 out of 10 show, all right? Yeah. It's 7 out of 10. I mean, that's good. It's not. It's not. That's good. That's good. What are you talking about, Jay? That's good. That's within the top 30% of all shows ever made. That's pretty good. If Colossal is giving this a 7 out of 10, someone who is normally very critical about things, and it's a show built on a video game, does that is this like kind of noteworthy that this is the best show ever made out of a video game? It is the best show ever made out of a video game. It, it definitely is, but the bar is so low. The bar is so low for video game adaptations. There's a few okay movies like uh, Mor the Mortal Kombat one in the '90s. You might know that one, eh? Eh? Was pretty good. What? It was terrible, yeah. It was all right. Jay, you have the worst taste ever known to man. That's hilariously bad. The Mortal Kombat movie? And maybe, oh, I think I must be thinking of a different movie, actually. Yeah, you're just a little worm cat. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, thought, I was thinking of a movie with like a seven and it has a fucking five. Yeah, the seven out of ten is a good score. So I think it's a good show. The best parts are the opening intros so far. I don't really care. I don't care for the um, Gobliner. The goblin looking creature, the child creature goblin face. <laughs> <laughs> she looks weird. It puts me off my fucking breakfast. Uh, so I don't care for that one. Um, but yeah, I like the opening segments. So the opening of the second episode, which I've just seen the other day, I think is the best so far, where it's this funny little Asian woman who's like eating Nazi goreng in some Indonesian restaurant. And then she gets called in because she's got to fix this fungus that's spreading throughout Indonesia and eventually like destroys the world. Well, let's just call her Mrs. Mushroom. Mrs. Mushroom. Mrs. Mushroom, to keep it simple. It's a fungus that spreads and you get infected with it in your brain. Cordyceps. It's based on a real fungus. It's it's just mushrooms libad. Yeah, yeah, mushrooms libad. <laughs> I thought they had like spores 
in the game. Nah, they, they did in the game, but they rewrote it in the TV show to be tendrils because they wanted to keep it slightly accurate. So More like, realistic. You know, if, it was, also. if it was spores, then firstly, everyone would be fucked. And then any interior shots, it'd basically be the cast having to wear gas masks like in the you game. You would like that. You would fucking love that. I mean, e Ellie's immune, the, the, the little goblin girl, but yeah. Joel isn't. If this show is uh, if this show is pretty good and it's based off of a video game, do you think this is kind of a milestone that shows that some of the new AAA games that that invested a lot in story could transition? They're gonna blow it because apparently they've now God of War and so many other story games have all slated to get TV shows too. So it's gonna start that that thing where they just try and rush the shows out because The Last of Us did really well. God of War's being produced by Amazon as well, so yeah. it's just going to be fucking awful. I mean, it's more, it's definitely more action-packed The Last of Us because it is based off a video game. So, and obviously in a video game you need to kind of have interaction or it gets kind of boring. It's kind of snoozy, but I do like the opening segments with Mrs. Mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the most interesting bit of the episode because that's the only, that wasn't in the game so you didn't kind of know what to expect. She gets called in to solve, like, the chlorine Plids crisis, <laughs> the fungus mushroom growing in the brain. Cordyceps. Cordyceps. Whatever, Cordyceps. whatever. Mushroom, funny mushroom fungus. So she gets called in. She stopped having her dinner. She goes in the police car <laughs> over to the little, um, I don't know what it is, to the morgue. They go to the morgue. She's like digging through the corpse, finds the little funky thing. And then she's like, what do, you, what do we do about this fungus? There's no cure. There's no vaccine. And she's like, bomb. <laughs> That is all you can do, you can bomb city! One thing that's gonna be great about The Last of Us is it's making everyone scared of cordyceps now, because I'm seeing articles everywhere like, could it be real? Like, imagine these poor bastards that are actually selling cordyceps as treatment, because it's it's used to improve stamina, it's used in, like, uh, fitness training and stuff. Like, imagine people avoiding taking that now, because it's like, no, I saw the mushroom show, I can't, what, I can't take <laughs> that now. mushroom show! It's not even the zombie show, it's just the mushroom show. Bomb city! Bomb city! <laughs> Kill mushroom. <laughs> That kind of thing happens. Like there, there was this movie called Sideways about wine, where the main character sh shouts at one point, "And I'm not drinking any fucking Merlot." And because he made, he was an expert in wine in the movie, and because he talked down on Merlot, Merlot sales crashed. Like it, it killed wineries that were making that varietal. Well, look what happened with Corona, the beer, because of COVID. It's doing fine now, isn't it? Yeah, but, it's fine now. Yeah. Because the the first episode opens with a of a guy saying the world will end because of fungus. Eventually, because of global warming, they'll be able to live inside the human I body. I think it looks and delicious. That's what the Last of Us is. Implying. Looks fucking delicious. <laughs> oh, that's right. The opening was in the 60s, yeah. Yeah, it'd, it'd actually be kind of cool if they did like a flashback for every... I really hope they do that, but probably, probably won't. Yeah, I want to see more of Mrs. Mushroom. I think she's a very underrated character. She's not. She's dead. She's dead. No, nah, nah, I want to see more Mrs. of her. Mrs. Mushroom yeah. is dead. She was bombed. She, she didn't even try to escape the city. She's like, okay, we're fucked. She becomes a mushroom. That's how they end up killing the cordyceps. Like she's the final boss. She's that's, this giant. She's just this giant mushroom. That's a character arc from Mrs. Mushroom to Mushroom. Yeah, she's just this giant mushroom. <laughs> it's like the vampire king or the queen. The vampire queen. They have to kill to kill all the vampires. You have to kill the last mushroom. Just like s such a shit job of selling the show. Just watch the Lim Mushroom show, guys. Mrs. Mushroom. I love her. She's a one-off character, man. Stop getting attacked. God, I feel like I'm covered in slime after I record an episode. Like, I always feel like I need to take a shower. <laughs> like, I like how we didn't even get anywhere with Last of Us. It just derailed into Mrs. Mushroom and we... No, it's just the best part. It's the only part worth watching. Just watch the Mrs. Mushroom part. She's wicked. I love her. She looks like a little funny baboon. <laughs> I can just tell you took none of that scene in. Like, wh when her hand is shaking on the saucer, Oliver's like, what, has she got, like, fucking Alzheimer's or something? Why is her hand shaking so much? I don't get it. She just ate a very, very spicy tum yum soup. <laughs> Not like a mushroom? I would... <laughs> Not like a mushroom? <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyways, join the Patreon. <laughs> $5 a month, it's well worth your money. Garbage on Discord, basically. Yeah, it's basically just a glorified Discord server. We, oh yeah, we did release a bonus episode. I wasn't in it, so it wasn't very good. But uh, we did release that. Oh yeah, we're planning like a, a Dungeon and Dragons game. Oh, we're actually going to do that? Well, I'm going to, you can do it if you want. I was going to do it with some bloke in there who's like a, who's like an expert. Oh yeah, I need to actually get into... D&D. Yeah, it might be funny. For the Patreons or the Discord, I'll compile every single cut thing you said into a little file and give it to the Patreons. 
It'll be like an hour long. We didn't even talk about the show. Just mushroom lady. <laughs>